Welcome to TwoQuestions.tv. I'm Susan Marancini Mo. Joining me again today is Steve Hoffman, the captain and CEO of Founderspace, one of the top incubators and accelerators in the world. He's been a serial entrepreneur, venture capitalist, angel investor, mobile studio head, computer engineer, filmmaker, Hollywood TV exec, game designer, animator, and voice actor. He's also the author of this book, Make Elephants Fly, The Process of Radical Innovation. Hi, Steve, welcome back to the show. Great to be back. Oh, it's great to have you back, and I'm so glad you're here because I need your help. I, like many people, do not understand the blockchain. What is it? <laughs> well, you are not alone. Most people I meet are clueless, including investors, including venture capitalists, other entrepreneurs. It's really confusing. Yeah, and in fact, that was, I actually emailed you and said, hey, do you know what these things are? Can you help me? <laughs> Let's do a show. <laughs> well, I will try to explain the blockchain in okay. a way that even your Aunt Mabel might be able to understand. All right, <laughs> go not. for it. Go for it's it. It's the most way possible. So the blockchain at its core is nothing more than a decentralized database. So hopefully you know what a database is, yes. where you store information. Yeah. A centralized one is where all that information is under the control of one party. Yeah. A decentralized one is where it's shared by many, many different parties, companies, or people in any location. What? Now. <laughs> <laughs> You're already confused. No, no, I mean, I get it, but I just don't know how such a thing is possible, but okay, go ahead. <laughs> well, that's where the software comes in. So it's, uh, it's software. It was, uh, many parties have contributed to it. It's open source. And there are many different versions of the blockchain now because anybody can take that software and start modifying it and go a different way. So there are even two versions of Bitcoin because they branched the software. So there's Bitcoin, the original version, and Bitcoin Cash. <gasps> Don't get now, to Bitcoin yet. That's going to confuse me more. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but just but, so that you understand, Bitcoin is, is built using the blockchain. It is okay. not the blockchain. The blockchain is a software that underlies uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Okay. But it can also do many other things for many other businesses. Okay. And what it is, is it's a database that is shared, decentralized. And, and what happens at a very simple level is that you create these blocks, blocks of information. And a single block can be hacked, like somebody can yeah. falsify it. But how the blockchain works is that there needs to be a consensus among the majority that the block is valid. So even if a hacker hacks one person's blockchain or a hundred people's blockchain, that probably isn't enough because right now the blockchain, especially in popular applications, is spread amongst thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of people. And then you have a verification technique yeah. Uh, that they use to make sure every transaction is recorded and recorded correctly. So for example, if you want to transfer a Bitcoin, and I'll just use Bitcoin as the example, from me to you, mm -hmm. uh, then you have people who are called miners. And miners are processing these algorithms that go in and verify it. And if the majority of miners agree it's true, then the verification passes and it's recorded in the blockchain. Now, the blockchain itself is like a ledger system. It records every transaction and it is shared amongst all the users. So the blockchain keeps growing and growing and growing and, and, and it's distributed. So instead of one central authority mm -hmm. controlling it, all the different, it's, it's controlled by the, the community of users. And the vision for the blockchain originally was that they could create uh, a currency that wouldn't be controlled by a central authority. 
So either a government or a company. As Whoa. you know, uh, anybody can issue a cryptocurrency or a virtual currency. They have existed for a long time. You know, when you go into a game and you give your money for a little game and you start buying, you know, weapons or power-ups or whatever you need, yes. that's a little virtual currency inside the game. And it's controlled by the, by the game's database and the, and the company that runs the game. They can issue more, they can you know, determine what you can buy, but in a decentralized currency powered by the blockchain, nobody has control. Now, this is great uh, if you wanna build, the blockchain is built for the purpose of decentralized currency. Now, people have, have had the notion, oh, what if we apply this new technology to other problems? Yeah, because it seems really secure, right? Like the idea that, you know, Target gets hacked and all the tar credit card customers' data is gets stolen now. But what if that was distributed across the blockchain? Maybe they would only have gotten a bunch of zip codes. Is that does that make is that how it works? Some in some ways, yes. In some ways, no. Mm -hmm. uh, because everything is recorded in the blockchain, we don't really know if we want all our private data inside the blockchain because it's contributed <laughs> to all these people. Oh, so, good point. So it's not necessarily good. It's good at being secure for a currency and transactions. Uh, that is fine. Do you want your social security number in there and your credit card information in there? Uh, maybe not. And it depends okay. how the blockchain is designed. So it wow. might not solve those problems. There has been a lot of enthusiasm about yeah. applying the blockchain to everything from insurance to banking to getting your transcripts from college to you know running charities and raising money for charitable organizations all sorts of things you know everything under the sun everybody gets excited <laughs> the problem is what i found is most people actually don't understand what the blockchain is yeah and when they apply it to certain problems if it's not the best tool for those problems it actually causes more trouble. Oh, than no. <laughs> yeah, so we have not seen, and trust me, I'm an investor and I work with startups all around the world. I've been searching for really good applications of the blockchain outside of cryptocurrency. Yeah. And there are some, but relatively few. And I will explain why. Most companies and organizations want to have control over their system. They want to have control over the data and everything else. The whole blockchain is predicated on them not having control. Uh. It's centralized. <laughs> so, so it, you know, in most cases, a, a corporation like a bank, which is very private and wants to control absolutely everything, yeah. would, you know, they're finding it very tough uh, to find real applications of the blockchain Oh, no. how they want to do business. And the same would be true for a company like Amazon. Uh, they don't, they want to control everything. Yeah. <laughs> they don't want, every, you know, all the, they don't want some currency that nobody controls. And there are a lot of problems or any, you know, uh, even using it internally, they want to keep full control of the data, uh, of, you know, of how it works, of everything. So the blockchain's applications, my prediction is, they will be much more limited mm -hmm. than people think they are today. There are yeah. a huge number of investors who do not understand the technology, who are funding all these ventures just because they have blockchain in their name. Because it's but, hot. <laughs> you know why it got so hot? Um, it got so hot because uh, the price of Bitcoin went through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> And, and all my all my Bitcoin friends were like, you should buy now, you should buy now. I'm like, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> Which probably brings us to your second question. <laughs> yes. What is Bitcoin? What's an ICO? Is it a good idea? What is all this stuff? I just have money. I don't know. I don't have Bitcoins. I don't know what they are. <laughs> Again, even people buying Bitcoin and even people buying these other cryptocurrencies and participating in ICOs. They don't know. They're clueless. A lot yeah. of them are more clueless than you, <laughs> even though you admit you're clueless. Well, it seems uh, like kind of play money to me. Like, 
what's it backed by and how like, I don't I don't get it but then again I don't really think the dollar is backed by anything anymore it used to be the gold but now it's not and I don't really know okay it's very confusing the dollar is a fiat currency like Bitcoin meaning it's not backed by the gold standard like anymore. it used to be we yeah. found that we don't need that the yeah. reason we don't need the dollar backed by the gold standard is is because it's backed by the U.S. government. Okay. If you have faith in the U.S. government and the U.S. <laughs> economy, then you have faith in the dollar. Okay. As soon as you lose faith in the U.S. government and the U.S. economy, uh, you would probably want to sell your dollars. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the dollar is backed by something. Okay. Uh, even though it's a fiat currency. What is Bitcoin backed by? Well, right now it's backed by a massive amount of speculation. Yeah. In other words, gambling, right? Mm -hmm. Those people were right. What, what many people like me um, failed to realize is I looked at Bitcoin and I said, is this a better form of currency? Would yeah. I use this over the dollar? And I ran through it in my head in the early days because I was exposed to it. Sure. Um, and unfortunately, I didn't buy it. <laughs> so don't come to me about uh, uh, buying in early to these. Um, <laughs> what I looked at was, would it replace the dollar? Mm -hmm. And my estimation was it would not for several reasons. One, it's still much harder to use. And especially in the early days, it was extremely hard to get Bitcoin. I mean, you had to be an engineer <laughs> to figure yeah. out how to get it on your computer. You couldn't be an average person. I knew that problem would be solved. But the other problem was a Bitcoin isn't really pegged to anything and it will be fluctuating, you know, dramatically. As now, has, as a currency, yeah. do I want to, you know, know that I have $100 in my account and go out to buy something and find out, wow, now it's $50 and the next day it's 75 and the next day it's 10. Yeah. You know, it's going all over the place. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. And if, I don't know. Uh, what Bitcoin, what my savings account in Bitcoin will be worth tomorrow. Yeah. No, currencies in the world need some stability uh, to be function as a currency you use every day. Yeah. What I didn't take into account was that what Bitcoin, the potential Bitcoin was not in, uh, in the foreseeable future to be an actual usable currency yeah. uh, because I can already use my credit card, which is like a virtual currency anyway, right? Right. And they give me cash back on every purchase or free <laughs> airline miles. Right. Bitcoin, I actually have to pay to make yeah. these transactions and the transactions are slowing down. So yeah. my estimation initially was correct. It would be a very poor currency unless mm -hmm. you want to do two things with it. One I identified early on, which was illegal activity. Shady stuff. If you, yep. If you want to trade drugs and do others, you know, and m launder money. Well, these cryptocurrencies are ideally suited yeah. for this. And, and I was like, well, that's still going to be a minority. And if yeah. that's all they're good for, the governments are going to shut them down. Yeah. That was my one thing. And then the other thing uh, that I initially didn't take into account, or I would have bought a gazillion Bitcoins when they were, when I looked at them and they were around yeah. like $3 a pop. You yeah. Know? You know, why wouldn't I buy a gazillion? <laughs> yeah, what it really was, was they were launching the biggest casino the world has ever known. You know what? It's funny. I, I, I don't think I've told many people this, but when I started seeing that happening, I had just watched a documentary, and this is the most random thing, but I had just watched a documentary about the Dutch tulip bulb market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know? Are you familiar? Tulip mania. Yes. And they went crazy and they were spending all of their money on a bulb and then maybe the bulb wouldn't grow or it would be something else. That or they would just trade a wrong documentary to watch at it, that it was. If I hadn't watched it, I might have bought a couple of bitcoins. Yeah, but you know, nah. <laughs> all I could all I could see was it's just the Dutch tulip trade again. <laughs> I know the history. I know what bubbles can do. Yeah. And I saw uh, and 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 I said I don't want to really be part of this. You know, yeah. I'm not going to just gamble my money. I'm not like a gambler. I don't go to Vegas. Right. There are yeah. certain people who love to gamble. And I go, well, that's for them. You know, I yeah. don't know how big it will get or whatever. It's for them. Yeah. And then, you know, it, people were paying the price of a home for one tulip bulb, right? Yes, that's right. Well, people have been paying like 
almost the price of the home. <laughs> well, it depends where you live, right? Yeah. You know, a hundred bitcoins. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's insane. <laughs> Ten bitcoins, you know, yeah. uh, is, is, you know, can be as much as a, a house cost. Mm -hmm. And what are these? What's the underlying value of these yeah. cryptocurrencies? Will the underlying value eventually, when the gambling stops, when the bubble bursts, will normalize, will come down to yeah. the value that they are used in actual, as an actual currency, as trade. You know, yeah. everybody who's gambling at some point will sell them off, you know, yeah. when, when the bubble bursts. And then uh, they will be used for two things. Uh, you know, one, what they're trade, what they're used in commerce for, right? They'll have a value based on how much money people have uh, put into the system. Right. And for legitimate trade, for legitimate, like buying stuff on Amazon or buying stuff, you know, probably the value will be pretty darn low. Yeah. For illegal stuff like money laundering and drug trading, I don't know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Could be. That's not our audience. We don't need to know that yeah, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying, <laughs> well, I mean, if you're buying Bitcoin, you're asking me the value, you know, it will be those yeah. two things factored in. And, a, and one more thing, a third thing, and that is a store of value. So, uh, yeah. People buy gold, not because they use it to buy things every day. You don't go in with your little pouch of gold, you know, right, <laughs> right. Start putting gold nuggets down to, to buy your, your uh, LCD, <laughs> um, but, but they, they store money there. Yeah. So some people will store money there because they don't trust their government yeah, or they don't afraid of the taxes or they want to get money out of the country like or zombie apocalypse or, yeah, or the apocalypse or whatever right so those are the three values right yeah legal trade Ill illicit trade and store of value what yeah. will what will bitcoin be worth in the future i have no idea right but in the zombie but, apocalypse it's zero because it's all digital well yeah in the zombie <laughs> apocalypse you're, you're better off with <laughs> you know food <laughs> yeah food i just watched it be food guns <laughs> medical supplies right those survivalists but yeah we won't go there no. so uh so <laughs> a lot of the people who created bitcoin initially were presuming that they are libertarians that's kind of their dogma uh... and they wanted to escape all government control so they were doing it for ideological reasons which is different than economic reasons yeah but it took off primarily, let's face it, as a, the world's biggest casino, right? Yeah. Or biggest bubble. Yeah. And we'll find out which. If it keeps going and people keep loving this gambling, well, the bubble could go on forever because people just like keep gambling with it, right? Why go to Vegas when I can buy Bitcoin or oh. one of a thousand other flavors of cryptocurrency? <laughs> now, most of these crypto, Bitcoin has been around the longest. Mm -hmm. It is the best known and the most used. There's also Ethereum. Uh, which is another cryptocurrency, which is uh, used a lot. And it has a feature, an additional feature called smart contracts. So smart contracts enable you to programmatically uh, make an agreement online, uh, a, a, a digital agreement where the cryptocurrency, Ethereum, will be transferred to you if certain conditions are met, digital wow. conditions. So it could be good. Uh, for transferring money uh, when, like you say, well, if you show my advertisement uh, 10,000 times on your site, I'll automatically sure. pay you, right? Sure. That's good. But you can do that without uh, Ethereum, honestly. Yeah. I mean, they make a huge deal out of it, and I tend to be a little skeptical. You can do that with an ordinary database. I mean, yeah. you can have these smart contracts. But, you know, they're saying it's trustless. You don't have to trust the person. It's built into the system, blah, 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 blah. You don't have to trust any one company. Well, honestly, you know, if we're doing a transfer and we have an online escrow service, you know, we usually trust that es escrow service. You know, they yeah. don't have a reason to rip us off <laughs> right. uh, uh, and they would get sued if they do. Yeah, so we, of course. We, the trust isn't as big an issue as, uh, as I would say, cryptocurrency diehards would uh, want you to believe. Like true believers of cryptocurrency, it's almost a religion. <laughs> it's so interesting. I feel like... Yeah. I feel like this has been so helpful so that, I mean, I feel like I at least have a basic understanding of what these things are now, because that was why I reached out to you. Cause I was like, Steve, I don't know what any of this is. And I feel like now at least I can operate with a working knowledge, however basic it might be, but, but it's a relief to know I'm not missing out on some big thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. you're, you're, you're not, uh, you're not. So if you love gambling, 
uh, and you would rather uh, buy cryptocurrencies than go to Vegas? Well, be my guest, right? I feel like there's more entertainment in Vegas, though. Oh, yeah, you got the flashing <laughs> lights and you know the sounds and you know yeah. you can have free drinks. You know, it's more, yeah, it's more fun for, there. Are, you know, shows. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. can do cryptocurrency from your computer. You know, it's convenient. Um, so, <laughs> cryptocurrency so is boring compared problems. to Vegas. I want to warn you, though. There okay. are a lot of problems with cryptocurrency compared to Vegas. So, okay. it, it the problems are. Uh, multiple. Uh, the, the first one is a lot of these cryptocurrencies like are literally built on thin air. Like Dogecoin, it was a joke. It was a meme. The oh, guy put yeah. it out there as a joke. It's now worth, I don't know, billions of dollars. <laughs> what? Now, yes, it's a joke. And people, because it doesn't matter if you are gambling, if you are just speculating, it doesn't even have to promise be a currency because of what I told you. That's not the value that people are buying it for. They're buying it because they think other people will pay more for them after they buy it. That is so scary. Kind of a Ponzi scheme, right? Oh my gosh, that's and so scary. Is, billions of dollars have flown into the, uh, have, have, have flooded into this market. I mean, it's worth hundreds of billions of dollars now. What? Okay. Who's putting that money in? Everyone from, you know, your plumber, <laughs> <laughs> I've had people come up and say, my plumber's recommending this cryptocurrency. Should I buy it? And I just go, well, you know, if you want to trust your plumber, go ahead. <laughs> I can recommend some penny stocks too. That, That's you know, so them. worrisome. Stop, you know, a lot of these companies, not all, a lot are true believers. They really want to change the world. But a lot of the peop actors now in the cryptocurrency space are just as reputable as a penny, you know, these people who pump and dump penny stocks, you know, they'll yeah. come out with a penny stock, they'll do a big press release, they'll get everybody to buy it, they'll sell their shares, they'll get out. They're yeah. doing the same, although it's even better with cryptocurrency. Because first of all, pump and dump can be illegal, right? Yeah. Cryptocurrency, we don't really know yet. It's illegal in China and some other places, but not in the US. No so regulation, the gray, yeah. The gray area. Uh, people are pumping them up. They are actually, like when they launch a cryptocurrency now, they will actually take a portion of that cryptocurrency and start doling it out to all the different blogs and websites. Yeah. And even Facebook was getting a lot of this money, you know, and yeah. places like that where they're putting up ads and putting up articles, you know, bloggers getting paid a hefty sum of these coins to write articles recommending you buy them, you know, oh my gosh. what does that do? That gets their value up and... <sighs> The whole value of an ICO, which is an initial coin offering, like an IPO or like one of these penny stocks, yeah. is to get the word out that this thing is the next top thing and you're gonna make the you're gonna be in on Bitcoin when it just started all over again. That's why oh. all these cryptocurrencies took off because people like you and me who didn't buy Bitcoin, <laughs> uh, they were saying, Well, now you have your chance, you could be rich. And no. what's the you asked who's buying them. Everybody wants to get rich quick. Oh, stop it, people, stop. That's a, that's a lot of people apparently, right? Oh. You know, hundreds of billions of dollars worth of their money is going into this system. Everything from poor people in Nigeria who are living oh, off of you know, no. almost subsistence wages are taking their money and they've been putting it into these cryptocurrencies to very wealthy people around the world, like mm. these super rich venture capitalists, investment bankers. But in the end, uh, it's gambling. Um, mm. Now, will some of these cryptocurrencies be worth something uh, once the bubble collapses? Maybe. Probably, yes, they'll be worth something. But it, I, nobody can tell you what they'll be worth. Mm. And they, uh, most of them, I will guarantee that 98% of them uh, will be worth nothing. Yeah. You know, if you can pick the 2% that are worth something, then you have to run the calculation. Uh, if I'm not just speculating, you know, I'm a short-term investor, get in and get out, um, then will they be worth more than they are now? And how much more? I can't make that determination. And that's why, and I'm not a speculator, so I haven't got it in the market. Uh, uh, I know a lot of people have gotten very rich doing this. I know a lot of people who, when Bitcoin was at double its current value, or even more than double, have lost a lot of money. Um, but uh, my recommendation is 
put the same money you would put into Bitcoin uh, that you would go to Vegas with, and hopefully you're not a compulsive gambler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a compulsive gambler, stay out. If it's money, See, you can, if it's money you can afford to lose, and you're going to have fun doing it, and you'd rather do that than go on a vacation to Tahiti or somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> we have a budget when we go to Las Vegas. We have we've only been a couple of times. We have a budget that is our gambling budget, and it is that's money we are prepared to the, lose. We leave all the wallet in the room in the safe. There's no money, no credit cards, no debit cards come down with us just in case, you know. Yep, you and so we just have our we have our little hundred dollars each, and that's it. That's all we that's, go down there with. That's we what don't, I do. That's nothing what I do. else. If I go to Vegas in the same way I'd go to a show or a movie. Yeah else you know you have your budget i'm gonna go out there sometimes i walk out ahead sometimes behind but i don't care i had fun oh, i'm prepared to lose it all and yeah. i and honestly <laughs> if i if i am sitting there and i'm having a really pleasant evening and we have a good time we have a few drinks we're hanging out and we enjoy my, my husband and i enjoy each other's company like and we spent a couple hundred bucks on that evening i would have done that That's, entertainment for me that yeah, was fun you know your husband want to take a couple hundred bucks get online get a bottle of wine no no there's no fun there on a cryptocurrency <laughs> be my guest that is so much less fun but all right okay See? that's all i'm saying it's fine to do if that's what you want to do but don't don't bet your retirement on it don't bet your home on it that's all oh, i'm saying gosh <laughs> steve where can people find you oh uh find me i'm all over the place no i <laughs> I'm on founderspace.com. Just go to found, you can email me with all your crazy questions about Bitcoin or <laughs> any of these other cryptocurrencies or whatever you want to know. I have lots of awesome. videos there too. Okay. Okay. And we're going to have all your links in the show notes for today as well. Viewers, here's the book. Great book. We've talked about it on this show a couple of times. You definitely need a copy. Steve, thanks for being on the show and explaining this to me. Thank you. I love talking to you. You know that. You can come back anytime. <laughs> Thank you. All Take right, care. viewers. Thanks Bye. for watching. We'll see you next time.